thank you so much for taking time to spend some quality time with the Institute for Strategic Policy Solutions, ISPS, so that we can learn a little bit more about what you do and how you engage in the community. I had the pleasure of meeting you briefly when I saw you engaged in what I think is appropriate to call a training. And I was so impressed with what you all were doing and so enthralled that I wanted to learn more. And I thought that our students, our faculty, the community and our stakeholders, those people who um, check in with us to learn more about community assets like your team obviously is, would love to learn more as well. So of course we had a brief chat before we talked in, so it's okay to call you JB, even though your name is Jason Barrett. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. So Jason, tell me a little bit, or JB, tell me a little bit about what you do. Like for someone who has just no information at all, if you could describe your role um, within the confines of what I witnessed uh, when I was there a couple of months ago. Well, absolutely. Uh, so I'm a sheriff's deputy, first and foremost, uh, with the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office where I've been for 21 years now. Um, I'm currently assigned as the SWAT supervisor. Uh, so we have 56 members assigned to our SWAT team, and all but two of those are in a collateral duty assignment, meaning that they have other primary jobs that they're responsible for in addition to their SWAT responsibilities. So with our SWAT team, we train monthly, um, several times per month, um, and then we also do a uh, countywide training. So we do a SWAT school with all the other agencies within the county, um, so that we're all sort of on the same page. We're all communicating effectively amongst each other and within our own individual teams. Uh, it leads into asset sharing as well for resources, um, but it also creates a lot of training opportunities around the county. So we're not just confined and restricted to certain areas. Um, so we work well with the other team commanders in the county, which is part of what you were witnessing that day was part of our SWAT school where we were doing active assailant response training uh, for our tactical operators. Uh, so we train, train, train constantly, and hopefully don't get utilized uh, as much as people hope, because um, if we're coming, then typically it's a bad situation, and additional resources and additional personnel with higher level of training uh, are needed to respond to help hopefully come to a peaceful resolution of whatever the incident is that we're responding to. Said so particularly if you, because you have so many other responsibilities as well, can you tell me a little bit about why the Allstate is the preferred space in do you train anywhere else? So we train, we train throughout the county in multiple locations. Uh, the, the location that the Allstate Center has uh, at that two-story building, uh, it is a unique training location that's specifically designed for law enforcement training. Uh, so one, it's a controlled environment. Uh, so we're not working at a commercial building and there's uh, non-trained or non-cleared uh, people that are working in conjunction because safety is our number one priority. Uh, so when we're doing some of this simulation or scenario-based real training, with marking rounds, uh, we wanna make sure that nobody gets injured and that anybody that comes inside of that training environment is fully cleansed. So there's no weapons, there's no knives, no sharp instruments, scissors even, um, almost like a TSA, if you will, uh, inspection, just to make sure for safety of our personnel, our instructors and any role players we might have. So that two story facility there, it has video cameras throughout. So we can actually watch every room, every hallway uh, from a centralized command location uh, for critiques, it also has a DVR system that we can record and go back and play it later for our team members uh, for education and instruction. Uh, the other thing is they, they have furniture, so it's realistic and scenario-based training. The, as real of an environment we can get in and train in and train hard, it's going to make the real operation that much easier for us. And that's we want to have that real scenario-based uh, desks, books on the desk, computers in the classroom, chairs, things that we're going to encounter and obstacles that we're going to have to move around and negotiate with on a real incident makes it that much, it's better training for us overall. And that, that facility, honestly, is, is pretty great for that. Well, it's pretty impressive when you're looking at it as a novice, but I also want to know your perspective. So I was there with the congressional delegation and with our leadership, but is, can the general public come and view your trainings or do you ever um, I, I don't know what the appropriate word is, quite honestly, showcase what you all do, or is it just strictly training? So we do, we do training, but there is certain events that, that the sheriff does. We do a sheriff citizen academy uh, where people can sign up for, uh, and they actually get to see all aspects of the sheriff's office, because with almost 3,000 members, there's many aspects that the community doesn't ever get to see. They don't realize that we have so many people working behind the scenes. They just see the cars, the cruisers, the deputies on the roadway. 
Uh, but there's many people working behind the scenes in different facets like fiscal purchasing that it's all a teamwork uh, environment that we wouldn't be able to do our job if they didn't do their job. And it works out really well. Um, but so we do a citizens academy where people can sign up and attend that. Um, we also do demonstrations and we attend different events. Um, sometimes it's a static display where we'll set up armored vehicles. We'll bring up the mobile command center, canine flight, the helicopter, uh, SWAT will have them. We sometimes do a static display really because we want to get the communities buying it. The more that they get a chance to talk to us and communicate with us, they realize one, we're, we're people. We're just like everybody else, uh, you know, dehumanizing badge, if you will. They realize that we have good intent. It's not what, you know, some aspects of the media may portray, but we're doing this job for the right reasons. And we're here to help the community and keep people safe. And when they interact with us, it opens their eyes and you can actually see the light bulb click and they're like, oh my goodness, like you're, you're a father, you know, you're a husband, you're a son, you, you have bills and you have problems just like everybody else, but you're also doing something else in addition to be a first responder or help the community in some way. Um, so uh, we actually had it last night, the Sheriff's Citizens Academy was here. Um, so, and it's different people, it's, it's all ethnicities, ages, backgrounds, uh, unique stories. And when they get to see different aspects of the agency, where their tax dollars are going, if you will, and how we're keeping them safe, even though they don't always see us, but we're always mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Detectives are working, uh, corrections deputies are working. There's so many things that go on at the sheriff's office. And again, it's, it's a huge team aspect. Um, and again, it keeps community safe. And we're, we're pretty safe in this community. We are pretty safe in this community. I have to say that I, like many citizens, have had to utilize you know, our officers. I'm a former city attorney as well. And so I've been during, engaged with many of you all. And so I, I understand the hard work that you all do. I, we, of course, are at a college and hopefully we have students engaged watching this. If there are young people who want to follow in your trajectory, could you share a little bit about the educational pathway or the requirements or what would be your best advice as to how they could learn to do this? We're always you know, giving advice about very specific professions, but I don't think we pause to talk about um, the trajectory of I'm gonna use uh, law enforcement generally and specifically in your case, how you got to where you are. No, absolutely. Uh, so my, my specific case, uh, I started you know, from high school graduation going into the military. Um, upon completion of my initial contract, uh, it was a, a reasonable transition uh, leaving the military. Um, I was originally a tank crewman and a tank commander, which doesn't really apply into the, the, uh, the non-military world, if you will. Um, and I didn't want to work construction, which was the lateral position. Um, but I started with a ride along. So I knew somebody who was in law enforcement and a lot of the agencies have a ride along program for potential applicants. Um, so I started as a ride along with Clearwater PD. I uh, did that a couple of times, realized this might be for me. Um, and then I actually used my GI Bill uh, to attend the Allstate Center, uh, SP College, um, and it, get my certificate degree for law enforcement. And then that led to this position here. I know in our community, uh, a lot of members that are in their teens that are somewhat interested in law enforcement, um, they'll do the Explorer program. And that's a chance to work alongside with law enforcement uh, and learn a lot of the roles and responsibilities of what we do. Uh, from marching to firearms to arrest procedures, legal, they get a little, a lot more insight than a typical person would. And then that helps pave their pathway towards or maybe against if they decide that that's not right for them. Um, the unique thing that we have here in this community is St. Petersburg College because we have a police academy here locally in our own county. Uh, great relationship, great program down there. Um, and that's where I went. I recommend, highly recommend it. But right now we're getting a lot of people influxing from uh, up north. Law enforcement has changed in a lot of states. Uh, so we're getting a lot of law enforcement people with history, with experience in law enforcement coming down here to get it, uh, you know, apply for a, a position. Uh, so the, um, the EOT program, the equivalency of training, they do a, a week or two week program there, take the state test, and then they can apply and be certified in law enforcement. Uh, so that's something that we're getting a lot of influx from those northern states. Um, we do ride alongs for potential applicants. Uh, so that's a good program too. Um, it gives them a unique perspective. It's not what people typically think. Um, a lot of problem solving, but a lot of report writing. People who don't get to necessarily see report writing a lot. There's, there's, and then there's the investigative side as well. Um, but like I said, within a large agency, there's so many different positions. You could change your, your position every four years and never repeat it. Between canine, marine, flight, SWAT, the different detective bureaus, 
narcotics, patrol, community policing. There's so many options here just on the law enforcement side um, that it really keeps it fresh and exciting um, so you don't get stagnant and kind of, you know, run in the middle, have this, you know, the Groundhog Day kind of effect. Same thing over and over and over again. Plus, on the, in patrol operations, every day is unique. No two days are the same. Um, you're not going to go into the same call twice. Um, so that does give a kind of unique perspective. Um, but back to the applicants, um, typically when we do these demos and we do recruitment efforts, so job fairs will attend, um, and we'll actually have different members from different bureaus there that can represent the agency and answer questions specific to those different types of jobs. Um, so we get a lot of positive feedback from there. And then obviously conversations, you know, networking, friends of friends. Um, anytime somebody gives me an opportunity to explain what I do, similar to this, uh, I absolutely seize the moment, explain every aspect of it. And if it's not for them, that's fine. But if it's for them and it's a calling, then hopefully it works out. You said something that I'm very passionate about, which is our veterans. Um, we have a strong veteran population at St. Petersburg College. In fact, we have you know little hubs at each college to support our vets and thank you for your service. What would you say to some of them who, um, your peers and colleagues who come back and have challenges transitioning into workforce? It looks like you did it seamlessly and something that sort of mirrored your talent and passion. But what would you say to um, your fellow peers who might have some challenges reacclimating into the community as this being a way to do it positively? Absolutely. So uh, having military experience, um, I just most recently got off my last contract uh, about two years ago. Um, there's usually job fairs or there's programs for transition programs. Um, researching, um, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, so a lot of people I talk to, they're like, I'm only applying here. Well, I, I always recommend apply at multiple locations, find the one that works for you or that has that right type of mentality that's gonna fit you and then apply at multiple locations. Don't, don't just assume that one is gonna work out because it may not. Um, also different agencies have different hiring uh, lengths for applicants. It could be two months, it could be six months, it could be a year. Um, so when they have, they have to have a, a game plan, even short-term, in preparation of your long-term goal. Um, so agencies right now are doing a, a like a, we do a deputy recruit status so you can be hired as a deputy recruit. So you're non-certified, you meet the eligibility requirements, go through the hiring background, interview board, you get hired as a deputy recruit. And then we actually sponsor you to go to SBC and go to the academy and get your certification. So that's a huge benefit, especially for those military members that are transitioning out because obviously they have bills to pay, they have families they have to take care of. And in lieu of having a five and a half month gap where you have to find short-term work without benefits, most likely, or, or lower benefits, this is an opportunity where you can actually start your career, start your profession, and be paid with benefits while you're attending the academy. Um, so that's a really good program. And a lot of agencies are starting to do that now. And again, having an academy so close, it really is a benefit for everyone. That's outstanding. So, um, and what I hear from you is also that there has to be a connection with, with us, of course, locally, but regionally, state, and, you know, how do you interact with other agencies around the state, if you do, if you can share anything about that? So network is a big thing for us, uh, obviously training opportunities, but also what is the new techniques, new tactics, new equipment that's out there, um, the ones that have purchased it or looking at it, does it work? And it kind of works together. Um, so we, uh, for SWAT specifically, uh, we're a member of not only the National Talk Tactical Officers Association, but also the Florida SWAT Association. So we attend those meetings, conferences, and there we do a lot of network sharing and we communicate a lot. Um, so, and that's also an, a door opening for applicants. So if somebody can be like, hey, I'm looking at potentially doing a tradition change or my spouse or loved one, they're moving, uh, they're gonna get relocated into your area. Can you recommend? location, housing, potential uh, employing agencies. Um, so that's, that's network sharing is constant. I get calls from out of state. Um, we have certain vehicles and certain equipment that we utilize. So the vendors will pass off our information so that they can call us and, hey, what's this equipment that you're using? Is it working? What's the pros, cons? Should we buy it? And then we can give them on, honest feedback. And it really, I do the same thing. I'll reach out to whoever I can. Hey, you have this product before I even look at buying it. Is it worth it? What are the pros and cons? actually give me the positive feedback. Um, and it works out well for us. Well, I love the breadth of what you've been able to distill and describe so quickly. I have one last question for you, which is always my favorite question to ask 
particularly people where I just don't know as much about their profession as I'd like to, what is the best part of your job? What do you like most about it? So me personally, I, I love community <laughs> interaction. I love any opportunity I can to actually uh, change people's outlook on law enforcement. So every interaction that we have can be a positive interaction. And I actually love the challenges uh, when I was working in patrol operations of people who don't like law enforcement for whatever reason, bad experiences, bad just perception of based on information that they get. And I love to have the opportunity to change their mind, to have them walk away with a positive experience that we're here to help. You should reach out to us. Please don't have your teach your children not to want to talk to law enforcement. Encourage them to talk to us. We are people and, and honestly, any chance I get to be have an honest conversation with somebody from the community, I think it's great. I love it. Um, community interaction. And again, when they walk away, they're like, you see, again, they see the light bulb turn on and they're like, you're okay. And it's a positive interaction. They walk away and it just improves, honestly, our relationship with the community, even just ever so slightly. If every interaction happened like that, it's just going to better community, uh, better involvement. Um, and I think it's just a positive. And that I love. I do, honestly. Well, I can absolutely tell that you come from a community of care. Thank you so much for what you do. And when I say community of care, that's the trigger that our college uses now, go tight. Because uh, what we do at St. Petersburg College matters. We have our tentacles so far into the community in terms of providing resources immediately to the public. And you're a fine example of that. So thank you for your time, JB. Uh, absolutely. Thank you.